I recently did a review of the Yaesu ATAS 25. It's a portable antenna, covers 40 meters through to 70 cents actually, handles 100 watts, and it worked very well. I was very pleased with it. But one of the things I like to do is to look at different ways of using antennas. And this is what I'm gonna do in this video, a different way of using the ATAS 25. Well, won't be doing this much more. Cutting the lawn, I've just charged the battery and uh, I'm gonna cut the lawn. It's quite long actually. It's a bit wet, but uh, hopefully it'll work okay. But point is that as we get towards the end of the summer or autumn, then it's time to think about radio, isn't it? If we can't keep cutting the grass, because it's too wet and it doesn't grow that much. But the great thing is, that we can look forward to some pretty good radio conditions this winter. So get yourself prepared. Anyway, when the days are fine and there's a bit of sunshine where it's not raining, we can still go out portable as well. So let's take a look at uh, one or two ideas I've got. So what's this video all about? Well, I recently did a review of the Yesu ATAS 25. It's a portable antenna. It's just over two meters tall, so it's a bit longer than the mobile version, the ATAS 120, so potentially it's a bit more efficient. And it will handle 100 watts. It's designed for portable work. It's designed to fit onto a standard camera tripod, and then you run out radios. That's the intention of the antenna, and it works very well. And if you look at my previous video, you'll see that I got some very good results. But wouldn't it be nice if we could actually use it in a slightly different way? I mean, it begs the to be well. It begs to be used on top of a car roof, doesn't it? I'm not suggesting you should go mobile with it, not on the move. But it would be nice if you could mount it on the roof of a car, because we all know that uh, if you mount an aerial on the roof of a car, it probably gives better results. Than mounting the antenna portable on the ground. The reason being that the car becomes part of the aerial system. I mean, we imagine that it becomes a good ground plane for the vertical, and it does, but it also radiates as well. And I've covered this um, briefly in a previous video, video, that the car body is part of the antenna radiation system because it's insulated from the ground. It's on rubber, isn't it? So it's actually almost like having a, well, a vertical dipole, not really. But anyway, you imagine the car as one half of the dipole and the other half of the dipole is the vertical antenna. We think the vertical antenna radiates, which it does, but so does the car body. Anyway, enough of that. Let's see how we could possibly use this antenna on the roof of a vehicle quite easily. Now let me show you the setup for this experiment uh, on the roof of the van. I've got the coax feed going into the bottom of the ATAS 25. Got a ferrite core there as a line isolator so that the coax feed doesn't take any part in the operation of the antenna. And then I've got three radials here. Uh, they're around about uh, three meters long each one. And I'm going to put those try and spread those out on the roof of the van. I can't really spread them out very easily because I haven't got a step ladder to actually get on the roof. I can, I can just about reach the edge of the roof and I should just throw them on the roof just to see what happens. The idea being that there will be enough capacity um, and enough interaction between these three radials, the roof of the van, combined as an earth or ground plane for this antenna. And we'll see uh, We'll see how it works, so let's uh, give it a try. Well, the problem is that I'm down here and the roof of the van is up there and uh, I can climb on the edge of the uh, um, van here. If I cl climb on there, hopefully I can reach the uh, top of the van. or give it a whirl. So the idea is to uh, get the ATAS 
on top of the roof. I've just got to put the uh, the whip on. These whips, or the whip, is in uh, three sections. Where is that? That's the top. So that goes in like that. Uh, I'm six foot two. So I suppose it's about two metres high. Now I've got to get this on the roof of the van and also get these radials which tend to get tangled up. Anyway, Ooh. sun's in my eyes. But there we are, that's yep, that's okay, that's on the roof of the van, okay. Then these radials, ideally, I'd like to spread them out on the roof of the van, but I can't. All I can do is chuck them. <laughs> They'll uh, end up in a bunch, whoops, on the roof of the van. And uh, we'll just uh, see what happens. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's okay. Right, so got a. Uh, Link the cable going down here. Next thing I'll do is put it on the antenna analyzer um, and try and get resonance on 20 meters. Well, the uh, 20 meter resonance seems to be very well established. It's excellent VSWR. So obviously, the radials and the metal roof are working well. Now, normally you'd use a magnetic mount. But because of the base of this antenna, the ATS25 is designed for a tripod, I've used just a sort of a little sort of flat tripod as you saw just now. Um, you, can, you can pick those up on uh, uh, Amazon. And uh, obviously all the capacity that is there is formed by those radials lying on the roof of the vehicle, which is quite interesting actually. Next band I checked was 15 uh, meters. I didn't bother with 17 meters because it basically covers all the frequencies. But anyway, it uh, it works on 20 meters. It does work on 17 meters. Didn't take a photo, photo of the um, VSWR, but it's about 1.2, 1 1.3. Here's the 15 meter uh, display, and you can see it's excellent. And that's just with it on the roof of the vehicle. Um, no magnetic mount. Just three lengths of uh, three meter radials just slung on the roof of the van. Next stop is 10 metres. That I got a really good VSWR on 40 metres. I got one, about 1 1.2 to 1 on 40 metres. That's quite incredible. So it's really blown me away because I've never actually thought about using radials on the roof of a car instead of a magnetic mount. Uh, the downside is that you cannot use this as a mobile arrangement, in other words, in motion. It's great for portable operation. Just to plop the uh, antenna on the roof of the vehicle, as I've done now, and uh, three radials or four radials, wire radials spread across the roof. And it seems to work extremely well. As I say, 1.2 to 1 on 40 metres. And there was low VSWR right, right across all the bands up to 10 metres. On 6 metres, you do need to take two of the three sections out in order to get it to resonate on six meters. So it's a very, very versatile antenna, far more versatile than I expected it to be. It's great for stopping on the side of the road, putting on the roof of your vehicle, and it's great for putting on a tripod in a field or side of the road or wherever you happen to stop. Now I decided to uh, repeat this uh, when I got home using the uh, family car. And I'll just show you now what I did just to check out whether this is applicable to a smaller vehicle as against my large van. Now if you remember rightly, the actual radials on this antenna are attached to this um, point here. You take that out and uh, put a terminal under there and um, tighten it up. I decided to change this for this next test. I decided to um, do something different. I'll just show you on the screen here. I got myself a large solder tag, the sort of tag that goes behind an SO239 on a chassis, chassis mount socket. And then I soldered three radials to it and uh, put some heat shrink uh, around it. 
and then put that on top of the uh, tripod stand so that when I screwed the aerial on the base which is uh, earth side of the antenna would make contact with the radials. Each radial is three meters long and I draped it over the car roof and put the tripod stand on the roof of the car. You can see it looks like a mobile setup. You can see a close up here now and uh, I used a line isolator at the coax feed point. You can see on the roof of the car here. So how is all this working? Well, the radials three meters long quite clearly nowhere near a quarter wave long on anything other than perhaps uh, 15 and 10 meters but when you put the radials on the roof of the vehicle they sort of couple in to the metalwork of the roof in much the same way as a magnetic mount would so you get the benefit of the radials plus the fact that they're coupling into the car roof and that seems to work basically as well as a magnetic mount so let me show you the results that uh, that i got here you can see the 20 meter band which is basically 1.4 uh, to 1 the uh, 17 meter band is excellent and all the other bands go down to that sort of level i thought i'd try the 40 meter band and that was amazing really by the way here's a quick way of getting your atas 25 near resonance there's an easy way of getting the ATAS near resonance just by listening on the receiver. All you do is slide the antenna up and down whilst listening to the receiver. Take a listen here. Yeah, it's that easy. Something else, you know. When I was messing about with this antenna on the roof of the family car, uh, a moment of what if came up to me and I thought, wait a minute, what happens if I just throw all these radials or the three radials just as the tangle on the roof of the vehicle? And uh, I did it. Do you know the results were exactly the same as when I laid the radials over the vehicle? That was quite amazing. Another thing I did, I ran out uh, a 20 metre quarter wave radial from the antenna on the roof of the vehicle and it was no better than when I just had the radials, the 3 metre shorter radials, laid over the roof. So there we are. Interesting, isn't it? So there we are. All that was done with the Yesu ATAS 25. Now you can do this operation of course this method of operation with other antennas but uh, I chose the ATAS25 because it's such a versatile antenna and of course it's uh, variable across a wide frequency range very quickly to QSY from one way to the other so I was happy with the results I got and I think it demonstrates that if you want to go portable some of the things you need to consider is how quickly can I set up the portable um, station and certainly with this system all you've got to do is to pop a tripod on the uh, top of the car attach the radials attach the antenna and you're ready to go and you're not impeding anybody who's walking nearby you haven't got radials on the ground so that uh, people could trip over or dogs could sort of gnaw away or play with it's all self-contained so that's one of the other advantages of it Good VSWR. Mind you, do bear in mind that a low VSWR doesn't necessarily mean that you've got a very good antenna system. All it means is that uh, the transceiver is delivering power into whatever's at the far end. But if you construct the uh, or erect the antenna properly and everything's in order, then a VS, uh, low VSWR is going to indicate that you're going to get maximum power radiated from that antenna. And as I said, I think in earlier in this video, that a antenna on the roof of a vehicle actually is quite an efficient way of operating portable. If you can erect a, an inverted V then obviously you're going to get probably better results but if you want to set up a, a portable station very quickly and get some pretty good results the system that I have demonstrated here I think is worth considering. So there we are. 
thanks for your support on this channel don't forget to press the subscribe button it doesn't involve anything other than alerting you when new videos are coming up thanks for your support here at the waters and santa much appreciated oh and if you are thinking of getting an ATS 25 we've got them in stock there we are in the meantime you enjoy your ham radio you take care and as usual i'll look forward to seeing you in the next video bye for now oh and by the way i did get the grass cut